Matthew 5, 43. I want, I want to talk about, and I, I did, I think I used some of this back a year ago when I preached on blessings and curses. But what I want to talk about is, is the new covenant and the new age that we live in that started in Acts 2. And uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take longer than I planned to kind of cover stuff that some of it's been covered, but there's, you know, I've listened to myself several times and others, um, and it's something I really, really think that we need to get in our heart. Because the old covenant was one, and we live in a new covenant. We live in a new age. But a lot of times Christians are still living in the old covenant. And, and they don't realize it. So, Jesus is talking here, and he says, you've heard it that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Now, in the old covenant, guys, if you'll remember, if you did bad you would set yourself up for bad stuff. You'd be a curse, right? In fact, if you, if you can go to Deuteronomy 28. I won't go there. I was going to read that. But one of them is what it says just next. In the Old Testament, it was pretty rough. As one guy said, it was pretty R-rated because it was really bloody. And there was some, even some morality things that are kind of weird that are talked about. And, and God told Joshua, when you go in the land, you kill everybody. I mean, there wasn't mercy there. It was, right? But he's saying, hey, that's the way it was set. It's changing. And then he goes on to say this, that you may be sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. And I bet some people said, say what? Because <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it said. But Jesus saying is, he has prepared him. You're at, we're, he was, was going to be fixing to die, but after his death, they were going to be put into a whole new age, a whole new covenant. If you remember, there was a guy named Elijah in the Old Testament, and he said... You know, these, he had the right to. These guys, Israel's doing bad, and he, he closed up the heavens for three and a half years, and it didn't rain, right? He had, the, he had the right to. Guess what? Today, you don't. Because he says it, it rains on the just. What he's saying is God is nice to people who don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, our sin required judgment or punishment so that justice would happen because God's a just God. He can't just turn his eye and say, you know, he can't be a crooked judge. So Jesus goes to the cross. He, he does everything exactly right. He was the only one who was perfect who could Stand in our place, because he died not only for us, but he died as us. And, and when justice was served, then God could give mercy. And though in the Old Testament, it's hard to see sometimes, but God's true nature is a merciful, a merciful God. The children of Israel, God wanted a relationship with them. He had one with Abraham and Moses. But when he offered to have a relationship with them to become kings and priests, or priests, I should say, on Mount Sinai, they said, uh-uh. We don't want that. You're scary. You tell us what to do. See, they didn't want to have a relationship, but they wanted to be righteous by their own deeds. You see, today, you're not judged on what you do. You're judged on what Jesus did. 
we got to get that in our hearts. We're not judged based on what we've done. We're based on what he has done. Amen? There are rewards, no question about it. God has rewards for us. You know, he, he likes to, to give out things because we were, were faithful. But you know what? He'll do nice things to you even when you're a, a jerk sometimes. It's like, why? Hello? Okay. <laughs> so there's this transition from the old to the new. Because what Jesus did, when, when he died, the Bible says, when you got saved, you were hidden in Christ. You're in him. Amen? No safer place, no better place. That's how God sees you, even when you don't see that yourself. The thing about a covenant, and, and there's been lots of teaching, and Richard does a great job on this, but a covenant in the simpler terms, is an agreement between two parties usually. And the thing about that, you're saying, I, I, I agree to do this, and I'll do that as long as I live, or, or I'll die. I'll put, you know, if you don't abide by it, somebody's going to have to die. If you're going to change the covenant, one of those parties is going to have to die. And so God says, I want to bring a new covenant with you, and guess what? Somebody had to die. God had to die. Jesus had to die for you. Isn't that amazing? Because of what he wanted to bring into our lives. Amen? Thank you. I've got so many notes. I, I don't like looking at notes, but I'm going to. The whole point of that New covenant is it's no longer based on your works. It's no longer based on how good you do. It's based on what he did. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's worth clapping. Thank you, Lord. So like when we, when we take communion... And it, it has multiple facets to it, but the biggest part of it is remembering what Jesus did, right? And I, and I would just throw out to you that one of the biggest things that it, it's supposed to do is to remind us of which side of the cross you live on. It's no longer, I got to do this right, I got to do that right, I can't mess up, I can't. Jesus says, that's taken care of. Okay? Now, here's the deal, guys. If some of us are still living on this other side, like if I mess up, God is so ticked at me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, the, and, the, and the point is this. Some people get this goofy idea. I've been there. I bet you have too, but been there so that when I messed up, you know, I got to go around to press for a couple days just to show God just really how sorry I am. You ever done that? And do you understand when we do that, it's really saying, Jesus, you didn't do enough on the cross. I still got to do some works here. And some people stay there for, for hours, days, weeks, or even years. Hello? And, and, and the thing is, some people would say, well, you know, if you messed up, I say, Chuck messed up big time. <laughs> Probably didn't, but a chick and... Are you saying yes or no? <laughs> so, but, so he messes up. And he's like, you know, God, I'm sorry. And he, and he just goes on like that thing never happened. And, and some of us would say, well, that's really greasy grace, man. You know, just... But see, if we don't do that, if we don't live into that, that fullness that God has, then we're not, we're not taking advantage in a right way of what Jesus did on the cross. He doesn't want us to go around to press for a couple days. He doesn't want us to be, because he paid the price for all of it. Amen? And, and what, what's so cool is 
we get to step into this place of mercy and grace. Now, I, I've given this, I copied it, and the guy that I copied it from, he copied it from somebody else, so. Copyrights in heaven. <laughs> You're going 100 miles an hour down the road in a 55. And you pass a policeman. And he pulls you over. Now, mercy is, he comes up and he says, do you know how fast you're going? Yeah. And you're expecting a big ticket. And he says, I'm not going to give you one. That's mercy. You didn't, you didn't get what you deserve, right? So let's say you did the same thing again. Cop pulls you over. And you're thinking, the ticket's probably a thousand bucks, you know, or whatever. And he hands you 10 $100 bills for speeding. That's grace. You get what you didn't deserve. Now, that sounds really crazy, doesn't it? But how crazy is it of where you came from and he made you, he not only forgave you, but he seated you in heavenly places. That's, that's, I mean, that is. Isn't that nuts? But that's, that's who he is. Okay. I got notes turned upside down. and <laughs> How far are we going to go, Lord? See, that person who goes around depressed, you know, it's like I'm showing God how sorry I really am. But you know what? If you're really sorry and you're asking to forgive and you repent of it, we're going to know because if you keep doing the same thing, then you, you're sorry you got caught. Do you, any of you are sorry you got caught when, when you were little? And, 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 and it really wasn't repentance. Like repentance means I'm going to change the way I think, change the way I do it. It was like more like I'm going to figure out a better way that I won't get caught next time. I mean, that's kind of that, you know. But, but God, he not only forgave you, he, he made you this new person. Amen. And, and it's, not about, it's not about you trying to show God something. How so, It's more about a change of attitude in your heart. Because you see that repentance means I, I, I'll never do this again. I mean, I can't believe I did that. And I'm not saying that you won't. But, but it's like I know that's wrong. You know, it's, it's one thing to make a mistake. It's another thing to do it on purpose. Hello? Jesus didn't die for mistakes. He died for doing it on purpose. James said, <laughs> when you know what you're supposed to do and you don't do it, you know. But he even forgives that. He took care of that. It's It's crazy. That's what this new covenant is like. Thank you, Jesus. You see, the Lord wants us to keep our eyes on what he did and to know that no matter what we've done, we have permission to live happily ever after. Now, you know, you know there, there are several in this room and you've went through divorce and all of that. And it's, it's, it's horrendous and it's, and there's never been a divorce ever that it was one person, all one person, not the other. It's, it's, it's a mixed thing. But see, even though we, we made mistakes, when we repent and when we, and when we get married, God gives us the right to live happily ever after. 
He doesn't want us, even though we've messed up, he doesn't want us living back there. He made a way for us to live, right? Now, in the church sometimes, we're kind of like this. <laughs> we want, oh, come on, you know, God forgives me. But then we have somebody that does something to us. Or, or they, maybe not to us, but they just do bad stuff. And we say, well, hey. <laughs> you know, we're looking for God to do something to them, right? Put the hurt on them because they did this or that. We even take it to the place of saying, well, God, God wants to judge this country because they're doing this bad stuff, right? Well, how about you? You've done bad stuff. See, it's a whole different thing. And, and no matter where somebody's been, God paid the price for us to be free and to live the way he intended. Amen? Amen. You know, if, 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 if a lady, unf you know, would have an abortion, you know, God would want them, you know, to repent. Say, I'm sorry, you know, repentance me. I realize I did it wrong. But he's not holding that against you. He wants you to live a wonderful life. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. The enemy loves for you to listen to him. The enemy loves for people to live below what Jesus paid for. And he'll spin it in a religious way. The Bible says that there is a day of judgment coming. But right now, we live in the last days. There is an end of the age coming, and it's going to get pretty fierce at the end. But right now, we live in the last days. The Bible describes, it's interesting, in the Old Testament, it talks about that, that those days, the great and terrible day of the Lord. Well, in the New Testament, it uses this term, the great, and some of the translations say the great and glorious days. These days that we can live in mercy and grace. These days that we can give that to others. The world is hurting for it. And there's, and there's so many people that have this idea, whether they want to bring judgment on you or they feel judged themselves. Because, you know, I got to go through some bad stuff to pay for what I did. No, 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 right? Jesus did that. Now, he wants you to follow him. And I'll just be honest, too. I'm looking at the time. <laughs> honest, too, is that, you know, you can, you can do stupid things, and there will be a price tag attached to it. You know, typically, if you speed, you'll probably get a ticket. You, you know, Jesus, uh, Paul said, I'm sure Jesus spoke by the Spirit through him. He said, you know, don't, don't, think, don't think God's going to get conned. What, what you sow, you're going to reap. And we, we all know that. I think God's intent is for us to learn from mistakes. But the judgment that you have to, you know, to make this right, that's taken care of, right? And, and God's saying, you know, his intent of, of following him is if I follow what he says, it's going to bring good stuff because he's, he's already figured it out. If I, make, if I do wrong things, if I treat people bad, no matter if I'm saved or not, there's going to be some repercussions, right? But if I do it his way, it is the best way. Is this making sense? Um, I didn't deserve to have a blood clot disappear in my brain.
but it did. And there, and it wasn't, oh, medicine did its best, but they can't figure it out. <laughs> and I reminded him it was the goodness of God that did that. Amen? Unless I forget to say, and it was your prayers with other believers. I've went back and listened to that service more times than, I mean, uh, Richard is a man of God. It, 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 I mean, I, I, I'll forever be grateful for friendship, but that, that Sunday morning, he led you guys. And there was something that shifted that day and in the days ahead, and part of that was that we, we became in unity more than ever before. And then we started seeing miracles happen. We started Missy getting touched and Chuck getting touched and others getting, you know. And there is this change that's upon us. My, my, my concern is that, that no one lets their past determine their future. No one even listens to that voice that wants to bring up your past about how you messed up and why you don't deserve. Well, you know what? Nobody deserves it. I mean, we can, we can talk about somebody who killed somebody, and we can say, you know, they deserve. Well, yeah, they do, but, but so do you, right? I heard Chris Valentin share a story. This was a friend he had in high school. And he, he was out with his girlfriend, intoxicated, driving, and she was killed in a car accident. And so he was sent to prison. Well, when he got to prison, there was this guy that came, you know, like a chaplain, guy that came and just started talking to him and, and uh, teaching him and loving on him, teaching him the word. And, and, and when the day he got out of prison... That man was waiting on him. And I, I made a mistake. It wasn't his girlfriend that died. It was a girl in another car. But when he got out, that man was waiting for him. And what he found out is that was the dad of the girl that he killed in that car accident. I mean, that's mercy and grace. And God goes beyond that. Amen? This morning, I don't know if you've accepted Jesus. I look around and I think you all have, or most of you. If you haven't, don't listen to that thing that you've got to get cleaned up. You've got to get your, right, your life together before you say yes to Jesus. It's like I've got to get cleaned up before I take a bath. You know, that makes no sense. I mean, that's really what it's like. And Jesus paid for it. We're going to talk more about that next week and go on more into the, the new covenant. We're even going to talk about false prophets. Praise God. It's going to be fun. <laughs> but this morning, I would just challenge you, if you're listening, if you find yourself living under a cloud in that you keep beating yourself up. You keep saying, you know, I keep, I, I don't deserve to have a good life. I don't deserve for God to do good things because I haven't done it all just right. I, I'd encourage you today and in the days ahead, but encourage you today to let some people pray for you. And you have to learn that that voice is not the voice of God. It's the voice of the enemy. It's not even your voice. It's the enemy reminding you of stuff because he wants to keep you from the life that God has for you. God wants to change 
the way we think, the way we look at things, to the place of the way he looks at things. And I'm telling you, it's the best. That's one of the things that that School of Kingdom Ministry does a phenomenal job on. So would you stand on your feet? Grab the person. I guess I told you to start again. I don't even know. <laughs> grab a person. No, yeah. Quit. It's in the love fest. Just uh, <laughs> all we need is love. Bom, 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 bom. We need John Scotland to do that for us. But Let's pray. And, and let's just pray f- f- for, for one another to understand that new covenant. So, Lord, we just, we just pray, God, that everybody in this room, whether they know it, they've experienced it, or, Lord, they're about to, that everybody would realize that we live on this side of the cross. Jesus took the judgment, provided justice for us so that we could have mercy and grace. We pray, Lord, if there's any, if there's any places in my brother or sister, Lord, that they're blinded from that, that they're, they're prevented from what God, uh, what Jesus did on the cross, and they're still living under that. Lord, we pray that you would open up their eyes, Lord, to change the way they think, to realize that's not you. That's not, they're not under that anymore. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we ask you to bless them this week. And Lord, I pray for all of us. Would you give us an opportunity to share your goodness with somebody? Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you need